Hello, 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 hello. Anybody home? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I can't hear. And you can hear that. Let me be quiet. Oh, echo. <laughs> Zero people here. Oh, there's one person. What up, Danny? Danny Malone, you're the only one in here. I'm going to wait till 7 o'clock to start. So please be patient. Got any questions about winter speckle trout, Danny? You know how to catch speckle trout in the winter? I went today and it felt like I didn't know what I was doing. What up, guys? Dylan? Dylan know where the winter speckle chart is at. Why should I say D Alley? What up, Matt? Sorry about last week. I got hung up doing something. Got trapped. Couldn't get to my computer. Or the internet. All right, it's 6.59. Let's get it going. I'm going to start off with some questions. Anybody got any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to start rambling on about... uh. I start rambling on about a bunch of random stuff about how I plan my trips, how I pick where I'm going, and uh, how I pick with lures and, and techniques I'm going to use to catch them. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of good reports down 23, Harold. It's a really good area to fish. It doesn't get a lot of uh all right, look, I just got my notes down here. It doesn't get a lot of traffic, a lot of locals fishing down there. Let me see. Put my notes right here. Let's see. Team Last Stall, what up? What up, John? Winter speckled trout fishing is the best. You don't have to burn too much gas. That's what I like about it. 
you can just launch and catch a lemon of trout right there at the launch. Oh, who's controlling this right now? This is way behind. I went to uh I went down to LA one today, Jason. There were definitely some trout down there, but we made the wrong move and ended up uh kind of striking out. But I ran to my buddy down there and he um he ended up with a limited speckled trout today. So they're definitely down there. But it's better when it's cold. The colder the better down there. All right, so I guess I'm just going to start rambling. Anybody got any questions before I start rambling? I'm just going to do a quick 30-minute ramble about how I choose where I go fishing in the wintertime because I feel like that's that's really the key to being successful is choosing the right spot based on your weather conditions. Because winter fishing is really pretty simple. Winter speckled trout fishing is really simple. You uh, The trout are really close to the launch. They are uh, they're hungry, and and they're pretty easy to pattern out once you uh, once you get them once you get on them. But in Louisiana, we have such a variable winter; it's, it it changes so much. Where we get those cold fronts, where it's real cold, 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 and then sometimes it'll you know it'll it'll be warm like it is right now, and kind of like uh, spring type feel. And the trout, will, you know, the, the trout will move based on, on what the water temperature is and what the what the air temperature is doing. Where's the map? The map is up there, ain't it? Can y'all not see the map? Oh, the map on the wall, man. The map on the wall. I gotta get some real tape. I'm confused. I thought you were talking about Google Earth. Wait, why am I waiting? All right, I'm tripping. My go-to lure for this time of year, I don't know. It has to be one of two things. It's either the um, it's either the mirror lure, mirror ding, or uh, the Rapala shadow wrap. I'm throwing those when it's comfortable, when it's not too windy and not too uh, not too cold. I'm gonna throw those all day long and try to catch some bigger, nicer sized trout, Harold. Yeah, Ross, I need to get in the Lake Pontchartrain. The last few years in Lake Pontchartrain, we had a nice run of shrimp, like right around this time of year, and the trout have been pretty active. But it all depends on the weather. It all depends on what the winds are doing and if we're able to get out in the lake. Uh, I fish Lake Pontchartrain a lot in the wintertime when, you know, we're in between the fronts. Like right now, this past week when we had these light winds and warm weather, It'll make uh it made fishing in Lake Ponce Train pretty easy. I went out there on Tuesday. I didn't catch a trout the whole time. I caught uh freshwater catfish. I caught uh bull reds, but I didn't catch any trout. But yeah, weeks like this week you wanna fish shallow. You wanna find the areas where you wanna find the areas where there's uh oyster beds, you wanna find grass beds where it's shallow, like Bayou Avenue is a really good area. There's a lot of grass beds along the shorelines. You want to get along these rocks here when it's warm like this and uh, and throw your suspending baits, your mirror lures, your corkies, and uh, your, your rapala uh, jerk baits, like uh, X wrap or shadow wrap, stuff like that. Danny, what temperature do they stop feeding at? I don't even know. I've been out uh, the last few years, I've been going out. On the coldest day of the year, I usually fish right here in the slip here, and I've caught them. I've caught them in like 30 degree weather where I didn't really even want to be out there, but I had nothing better to do. So yeah, on those real cold days, you want to find areas where the water is not really moving, where you got some deep ledges, like back here in the Michoud Slip in Chalmette. Uh This is a really good area to catch them in the winter time all through the intercoastal it's all deep through here and it's protected where you have these levees so no matter which way the wind is blowing usually out the north you can hide behind these walls but usually you know rule of thumb is generally like 50 degrees once it gets to 50 degrees they uh they stop biting yeah dylan d alley you're right yeah that's what i've heard but 
I don't know if they ever really shut down. Because if you think about it, I can't, you catch trout every now and then when you uh, – it just gets real hard when it gets cold. They, they don't feed like they do. Like they usually do if it's above 50 degrees. But either way, once it starts, once that temperature starts getting into the 50s, like 52, 54, 55, it's going to be hard to catch them. You got to slow way down and fish those deep holes. But yeah, I, I, um, now what are we going to talk about? So yeah. Uh, Ross, man, I got to hook up with you one of these days, man. I need to get on the boat. I haven't been on the boat in a couple of weeks. My boat is out of commission. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get on the boat with somebody soon. <laughs> out of kayaking. But in the wintertime, you also want to pay attention to your water level. That's uh, that's another key. Um, when those fronts come through, it'll blow all the water out the marsh. And so you really want to just abandon all those those grass beds. Like I said, in these rock piles, the fish are going to be sucked way off and they're going to be down in the deeper areas. So you can just avoid all of that. It, it makes it easy to fish when the, when the water is real low. Like even down in like St. Bernard out of Hopedale, a lot of people fish Lena Lagoon this time of year, Hopedale Lagoon and all that. And like when the water's up like it is in this picture, yeah, you can fish all the shoreline. But when it goes down, let's see if we can find a low water picture. Uh, I know there's one somewhere. There's a good one in Point of Shin. If I can't find one here, I'll show y'all. But, yeah, let's go over to Point of Shin. When the water's real low, it makes it easier to fish, I believe. That's what makes winter fishing so much fun. Is you can retreat into the deeper areas and know that the fish are going to be stacked up. So, when the water's high, I fish these little drains in the winter time with the suspended baits or you can fish over these these are like all oyster reefs right here you can fish over top of all this stuff when the water's high but once the water sucks out the fish can't hide there anymore it, you know it's pretty self-explanatory where is that picture with the no water at should have been more prepared right here is this it oh you can see the oyster beds really good in this picture but yeah, all these little edges you can fish over top or you can kind of see where they have oyster reefs right here. Fish over top, but once the water goes out, you just fish in the deep trough. The deeper areas and the fish will be stacked in it. The outside bends of bayous. The uh you know the, the dredged canals, like the main canal, like right here, it's gonna be really good fishing. Let's see what y'all talking about. 10, 29, 12. Let me see if I can find that. What's up, Alan? But yeah, this is Google Earth is my, my favorite tool when it comes to planning a trip. I get on here and adjust the slider and find all kinds of stuff. 10, 12. Let's see. Yeah, I guess the water is low. Yeah, the water is low in this picture. So yeah, you can't really tell in this area though, cause it's so deep all around here. But yeah. Um, what else we gonna do? So yeah, when when the water's low, you wanna fish your deeper areas, like around the dam. You can see how deep it is. So the water's low in this picture. You see all the exposed shoreline, but on this side, in this deeper water, it's clean, it's protected. All the trout are gonna be stacked right here when it gets when we get those cold fronts. Whereas north winds, you're not gonna want to be outside, but that the fish are gonna be biting. But if the weather's good, then you want to fish all those areas where the mud is exposed, because that's where the fish are gonna be. They're gonna be stacked up. And those old Renos are tough, uh, t Ross. I'm about to call you Tim. <laughs> yeah, those old Renos are sick. There's a reason that design lasted for so long. Damn, why I feel so discombobulated. Let's see, what else we talking about? But yeah, it, on a winter day, you want to, when you launch out, you want to start in your deeper areas. On, on mild days like today, you know, where the wind, where it starts out cold and it uh, works, the temperature works its way up, you want to. Start in your deeper areas, 
And then as the sun gets up, you want to move up shallower. So like say I was fishing the dam here, I would start fishing the middle, like on the inside of the dam, right? First thing in the morning. It's cool. The fish are gonna still be kind of hunkered down. But as it as that sun gets up, you want to make your way to these corners and on these shorelines. And uh, like these pockets like this where you see the shallow water, it's going to warm up really quickly. And those fish are going to push up there and, and, uh, and start to feed. So like say you launch and you start catching them right here in the deeper water and then they stop. That's when you want to just change tactics, get off the bottom, start fishing your suspending baits, your popping corks and get up on the shorelines and just move with the fish, kind of follow them up and down. Man, they got 27 people. What up? 27 people in here. That's a new record. I feel famous. <laughs> but uh, to me, the most important thing about starting a winter trip, though, is, is knowing where you're going before you go, like knowing your conditions. So if we've been having a, a hard north wind, I'm going to launch at Bayou Avenue. I'm going to fish around there. Or if, if we're having a hard north wind, I'll, I'll go out to Hopedale and fish the backside of the dam where I know it's protected, where you can see. The water clarity, the water quality difference from here, from the you know the north side of the dam to the south side of the dam, is huge. So you you want to know where you're going, so because even though you caught them last week in Lena Lagoon, when the when the you know when the wind was out the east or the south, if you go back there when the, you know when the wind's out the north, you're not going to have a great trip. So knowing what the water condition is before you go is really important in the winter time. Especially because you don't have to make long runs if you pick the right launch. So that's it. That's that's one of my keys. So in good weather, you know, you 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 want to fish your shallow areas, your lean lagoons and your Hopedale lagoons, stuff like that. But when it when it gets dirty, you know, when it gets windy from the north, you want to go to the deeper water areas and focus on those areas. So you probably wouldn't even want to fish Hopedale per se. You want to go to uh Chalmette and fish you know the mist to go up there and the intercoastal and all these areas that are protected uh you know i like to use um let's see i like to use the nasa worldview to see my water quality let's see this is a cool tool i know a lot of you probably already know about this but Let's see. It's called EOS. This worldview. I don't know what the acronym stands for. NASA likes acronyms. <laughs> but yeah, you get on here, and you can scroll in. You can see a picture of the sat a satellite image from pretty much real time, like from that day. You know, the previous day. Uh, you can't see anything because the clouds are out. But when it's not cloudy, like you can kind of see right here, like the water's kind of dirty in Lake Pontchartrain. It's clean in this pocket on the side by Bayou Avenue, so that's always a good uh, indicator that it's probably clean all through here. But then if you look down here, man, look at that, all that dirty river water on the east bank of the Mississippi, down in like Point Lahash, Delacroix area. But if you look at like Biloxi Marsh out here, it's real clean. Let's see, can we see Grand Island in this picture? No, of course not. So yeah, this is a cool tool. Uh, it's called I just search Worldview NASA into Google, and that usually pops. You can find it. Talk about jigging technique in the low 50s water temp. There's no jigging technique. You just drag it. <laughs> you just drag your bait. So yeah, when I'm jigging, when it's really really cold, so. Jigging when it's really cold. I'm going to hit up. My first place that I think of is, is Chalmette. That's like one of my first places I think. either I'm either going to go to Chalmette or I'm going to try like some of these deeper dredge canals on the North Shore. There's some nice deep areas in here that have very little water movement. So you want to look for very areas that don't have much tidal movement when it's cold. In these back of these dead end canals like this, like you know, you can apply it to whatever area you're launching in. Look for these areas where you have on Google Earth, you can get on it and you can see where you have like dark water. That means it's deeper. Find it. And uh, that's where the chart are going to be when it's coldest, uh, where you're going to be able to catch them. I don't know. 
But what I like to do when it's, it's really cold is I'll cast it out, just let it sink. Don't even touch the, the reel. Just cast it out. Don't even close my bail. Let it hit the bottom and let it sit there for a good few minutes, a few seconds <laughs> before I uh, before I touch the reel. And then I'll click the reel and then I'll just barely, just barely tap it, tip, tip, and let it hit the bottom again. Just let it sit there. And you want to be using the lightest jig head possible. So if it's not windy, if it's like one of those real cal cold, calm days, you want to be using like an eight ounce jig head. Fish it weightless if you can. That would probably be best. And you want to just let it hit the bottom and just settle out. And really, a lot of times those fish will just, they'll locate it and they'll just come up and pick it off the bottom and you'll feel a light tap. But yeah, you just want to jig slowly, slowly, really slowly in these deep backwater areas. Dead in canals dredged out canals stuff like that along the wall down there you but you really just want to you want to avoid all current that's that's the key that i find when it's really cold but when it warms up you want to pull out your suspended baits you can pull out your jerk baits the x wraps that's when it's really fun fishing even even top water when it warms up like this week is a good top water week to go throw in uh shallower areas where you're seeing bait, where you're seeing action activity. How long have I been on here? What is there a timer? Oh, 21 minutes already? Damn. And I haven't even talked about nothing. Anybody got any questions? Any more questions? There's 31 people in here. What up, Raymond? Rigged? Where do you launch for the Mishu slip? Oh, damn, I missed that one. What time was that? Uh, there's really no launch for the Mishu slip. That's that's a um, you can bank fish back there. I don't know if Alan's even still on here. You can park on Chef and walk through here. Yeah, why does it look so weird? It's 2012. That's why. Yeah, you park right here, walk down the levee, walk down this way. There's a little there's a little uh, ladder right there. You climb over, and then you can walk back here and fish off the bank. You ain't gonna get no kayak back there though, man. That's you have to be like Superman to get your kayak back there. But it's really good winter fishing. But if you really want to fish kayak, uh, kayak winter time, like when it's cold, just go back here to Go Hagen's Canal. Back in this canal, you launch right here at the Wrigley's Marina. Lots of nice deep water. There's lots of bass in here too in the winter time. Fish these, you know, these ledges. It's really deep once you get through in this canal. And then back in this area too, it's like a 40 foot dredge pit right here. It's crazy. It's got like straight vertical walls all along here. It's really deep. So yeah, that's a good winter time spot for the kayak. Other winter time spots. Let's see what else we got. Um, the dam in Hopedale. That's always a good winter time spot. -doo 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 -doo. When it's cold, um, you know the feet. I talked about this. I mean not the feet. Uh, Myrtle Grove, last time I talked about that, those trout get stacked up in this canal in the wintertime on the milder days. And then on those extra cold days, then the reds get stacked in there. So you can always launch a little kayak there, launch a boat there and catch some fish. Um, down in Port Sulphur, they've been catching them, launching out of this launch. Um, yeah, I got some good reports all this week about people catching fish all up and down 23. I need to get down there. Off the bank, you know you want to fish when it's cold winter time. You want to fish these pits. This is where I went today. I went down to Grand Isle and fished the highway in between Fushan and the island. And uh, it, it just wasn't cold enough for the fish to be piled up in the deep pits on the side of the road. We fished this area. We didn't get much bites at all. or We didn't get any bites in this area. But then we went back and, uh, you know, there's, there's this pit right here that everybody fishes in. And... They had a fair amount of people fish. I didn't see anybody catch anything. But what we did do is, once we realized that it wasn't super cold, that the water temp wasn't down deep enough to catch them in the deep pits, we kind of just flipped over to the other side, into these shallower areas. And we fished along this ditch. And we fished. Where else did we fish? There's a spot up here somewhere. I think it's out right here. We fished out into this shoreline off of this side into the shallow water. It also helped that the wind was at our back, so we were able to cast pretty well. You know, it wasn't casting into the wind into this pit. 
I had never fished down there in the winter when the you know we had like a east south southeast wind, so that was different. But we did catch fish all along these ditches here in the shallower areas, and down where the uh, the gate is. So the fish weren't in the pits today, and I should have known based on the weather that it wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, guys. Anybody got any questions? I'm, 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 I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I hope this was maybe a little helpful. I don't think it was. What other spots do you fish in the wintertime? Man, I love Point of Shin in the wintertime. I don't go out there enough. But you can catch a lot of nice trout out there in the winter. All through this main canal here, and then once you know when the weather's nice, like I said, all these black spots are like oyster reefs and fish attracting stuff. You want to fish all you can fish all around here and catch trout all winter long. And then there's like the old school sulfur mine out here. You launch out of uh, what's this place called now, Gator Cove or something like that? Yeah, Gator Cove. Go out here, it's kayak fishable or boat fishable. So an old winter hot spot. Anybody know anything about uh, Terrebonne Parish? What's the name of that place? This place, ain't it? Lake Decad. Anybody fish out there? I heard that's a really good winter spot, Lake Decad. I've never been out there yet. Somebody take me out there. Show me your ropes. Yeah, man, there's there's a lot of nice trout in Point of Shin. I got this one spot I go to every time I'm there. I need to find some other spots because I'm gonna fish it out. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like every time I go there, man. Anybody got any questions? I'm about to get off of here. I'm really tired. I woke up at four this morning to go fishing, and I'm about to pass out. I don't know if you can see my eyes. I'm about to die. It's probably all right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We're going to be back next week. Drop a comment below what you want to hear me talk about. Hopefully I can do a better job talking about that than when I talk about this. Good bank fishing in wintertime in St. Bernard. Well, until the Jubilee happens when it gets real cold, um, you know, when it gets super cold in St. Bernard, you know you can fish, catch those redfish off the side of the road. But I guess right now, only thing I can tell you is, you know, you want to fish the canal here in Hopedale. If you can get off the side of the road, there's a couple little pull-offs down here, like going towards Hopedale Marina. There's like one right here. Maybe you can soak some bait, jig on the bottom and catch some stuff. Um, there's a lot of little spots to pull off. This deep canal holds fish throughout the wintertime. And I know that for a fact. I know last year I had a buddy who caught a limited trout off the bank or in this canal up in this area. And then you can always go right here in Shell Beach at the end of the road. So when you like, you can go to uh, Campos Marina. Campos Marina, it's not right there. It's really right here, right here. But you can drive to end the road here. That's this big parking lot area. You can fish right off into the mystical right there. Same spot that all the boats are fishing right now. So yeah, you can try that. And let me know how you do. When you go down there, man, just drop a comment. March 9th in St. Bernard. Is that the tournament, Alan? I don't know. They're gonna be in a, they're gonna be out there though. I wish they would include Lake Pacha training to, in that tournament. Then I'd get excited. Edward, when I'm going fishing again. I don't know. I always shit. I might wake up tomorrow and go fishing. You never know what I'm doing. Actually, probably not. The weather's supposed to be really bad the rest of this week. But I think Saturday is looking good. So maybe I'll uh I post a little thing on my channel and let y'all know where I'm going Saturday if I'm going. And uh, I'll see you guys out there. We're gonna have to do like a little impromptu meetup. I'm not planning nothing, but I'll just you know put the blast out. If you don't follow me on uh, Facebook at Jeffrey Oliver, follow me on uh, Instagram at Fish X Scale, same as the channel name on here. And uh, that's where that's where you can get more uh, up to date information. I post a lot of stuff there that I don't share on YouTube, so. Thanks for watching, all 29 of y'all, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.